Welcome back to Excel 2016 Module 3. This is Part 2 and we're going to be looking at an introduction into some what-if analysis. So what-if analysis is a tool or a set of tools that we can use in Excel to analyze the impact of changing some of our input values. So let's take a look at a few of the things that we can do. All right, so you should be back in your Wingate workbook. You want to be on the yield worksheet. The yield worksheet should be your active sheet. If we look at what if analysis, we're going to be looking at changing one of the variables, one of those input numbers in the orange background so that we can see what impact it has on our proposed revenue. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so that you can see the projected revenue. And let's come up here and look at what if we changed the number of acres we had available for corn. So let's say we could change from 137 up to 150. You could see that would bring our projected revenue up to almost 97,000. Then we could go back and we could take a look and say, well, what about if we went all the way up to 175 acres? And you could see then the projected revenue that that would generate. So that's basically considered a form of trial and error. You're just going to enter in numbers until you get to the answer you're looking for. That is the simplest easiest and honestly Excel does doesn't do very much for you you're doing all the work so we're going to change it back to 137 and let's look at some of the tools where Excel does some of the work for us so let's say I wanted to know how many acres I would have to plant of corn to get a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. So I know the answer I want, but I do not want to have to sit here and retype in these numbers over and over again. All right, so we're going to click on our cell B4, where we are entering our acres. And then instead of typing in new numbers, we're going to go over to the Data tab. On the Data tab, we have in the Forecast group, What If Analysis Tools. They're on this drop-down. So you click that arrow, and you can see that right now there are three of them. We have something called Goal Seek, and that's what we're going to use today. So our, for Goal Seek, you tell it what are you trying to set to the answer. I am trying to get my projected revenues which is in B23, to $100,000. Do not type in number formatting, just type in the number. So a one with five zeros. And then it says, which value are you changing? And we're going to be changing the total acres. 
You can either tab between those boxes or you can click on those boxes either way. One thing you want to remember though with Goal Seek, it's pretty limited, so we are going to look at some more advanced tools later on. You can only change one thing and you can only set one value. Okay, you can change what it you change the value that you're setting it to. You know, you could say, you know, change it to 300,000 or change it to 50,000. You can type in a value you want. But it is pretty limited because not a lot of things can change and you only get one target. But let's see how quickly this can come up with the number of acres we need to plant in corn to get a hundred thousand dollars. And you can see how very quickly it came up with that answer for us. So basically she would need to go up to a hundred and fifty five acres. Okay, now let's say someone is trying to enter information in here for us and they don't understand that you can only type in numbers in the cells. So they type in 137 acres. And when you do that, you start seeing error messages in your other formula fields and that's because these formulas are using the data in B4 and because we added a word it is not text excuse me it's now text data okay so if we get a message like that then we need to try to figure out what's causing that error. So one of the things that you can do is you can look at what formulas, what cells these references are a formula. Excuse me. <coughs> what cells these formulas are referencing. So you can see in this particular formula, it's error is being caused by B21 because that's what it's referencing and it already has an error in it. So the problem is happening before this formula. So then you can look at it and then you see, oh, B4 is not a number and I'm using it in an equation. So that can't be correct. So when I change it back to 137, you can see then that my errors go away. You want to be able to interpret what some of the error code values mean so that you know what to look for. Okay, so if you look on page 152 in your text, figure 315, it does give you some of the error messages and at least having a basic understanding of what those error messages are trying to tell you then it'll help you with the error in solving it. For example we had a value when we typed in 137 acres we got an error message of value that means the wrong type of argument is being used in the formula. The formula you referenced could be a text value and it must be strictly numeric. Well that tells us right there this is a text value so we need to change it to numeric.
So in the next video, we'll start looking at cell referencing. We have to be concerned with this when we're trying to copy or, and move formulas. And then we will continue on looking at how to do autofill and some of the more complex formulas in our later videos.